Hi crafters, Amy here with Amy's Wares and today I'm going to use some layering stamps and make some cute critter cards. So to start off I'm going to show you the stamp set. Um, I got it a little while ago, I haven't used it before, um, but I've been wanting it for a long time and it creates all these adorable little rainbow critters. So as you can see the different animals are kind of sectioned off with dotted lines to show you which stamps go with which critter. And then there's also, as I found out, like one main arch that goes on all of the critters. So I'm kind of referring to the back um, of the paperwork to figure out how to stamp it. And I'm also going to be using my um, color wheel here that I printed off from Catherine Pooler's website um, in addition with my inks to figure out which colors I want to use to um, make these critters. So uh, it's a bit of a trial and error, but here is a photo of the card I'm going to make um, on film here for you, but do stick around to the end because I will have four additional cards to share with you that I made off screen using the other critters in this stamp set. Now um, I'm referring a lot to the back and when I was creating off screen I actually also um, Googled a picture of the die set because I really was struggling to visualize how these pieces came together. And if I'm honest, that's probably why it kind of sat on my desk for longer than it should have because um, it can seem a little intimidating, but now that I've played with it and got the hang of it, um, it's it's nothing, <laughs> nothing to let intimidate you. So to start, I was planning on using the middle of these orange colors um, for the center one and then quickly realized I went with the darkest one and here I realized my mistake. So I end up putting that card base aside and using it later and starting again. So here I'm grabbing the middle of the orange colors um, to start with this stamp. Now, um, like I said, there is a stamp that gets used as the main arch for all of them and I do end up figuring that out and it makes this whole process a lot easier. So um, if you get the stamp set, locate the stamp that is labeled main arch and start there and then build everything off from that and it will make it a lot easier for you. Um, you'll see on this first card that I made, things aren't lined up the best. Um, here's the main arch right here. So if I would have started with this, it would have made everything a lot easier to line it up. So again, you guys are just kind of watching me fumble through this in real time. Um, but I assure you, it's not as complicated as I'm making it look. <laughs> so I um, I did end up go, going through, like I said, off screen and stamping with all of them. Um, and really you could do this with just a couple colors of each. So you could pick a lighter and a darker color with all of these little critters and be fine. Um, you could throw a third color into the mix, but honestly I found that just the two colors works great for these designs. So basically the idea is it's basically like a rough rainbow shape um, and then they kind of just build in these abstract critters on top of it. So like here are the ears to the hedgehog. I already did the little you know spikes to the hedgehog and the snout. So I'm kind of just using my acrylic block to pick up the pieces and not have to do them individually. So if I know multiple pieces are going to be the darkest color, um, then sometimes I'm able to kind of line those up around my design and then just pick them all up on one acrylic block. Now here I'm putting in the little face um, of the hedgehog and then I also have these cute little detail bits that will not stop sticking to my fingers, um, but that will create the darkest color that I'm going to stamp with. And I believe I grabbed flame, but I don't think it was actually as dark as my 2D fruity color. Um, the reason being because I recently um, refilled all my ink pads, but not the newest one that contains flame. So I think my older ones that were refilled actually um, ended up appearing darker than the flame color. So that's where I kind of came to the conclusion that you could just have one light and one dark. but. I hope this is making sense as you see me working through here. Um, like I said, the different animals are sectioned off on the stamp set with the exception of the main arch. So you know all the little pieces parts go to that one particular critter and you can look at the back 
um, insert on the stamp pad and figure out where all the things go easy enough. So nothing to be intimidated by. And there's that cute little hedgy. Um, and then they have all these adorable little punny sentiments that go along with it. Um, I did decide to use my Misty for this just because I did go to all the trouble of stamping those layers and I didn't want to, you know, mess it up in the 11th hour and uh, ruin the sentiment. So it kind of nestles in perfect under this little hedgy um, and I'm just kind of getting it nice and straight here, trying to make it so it's not sticking to my fingers. These brand new stamps are so sticky and they really want to stick to you, but I'm going to condition it with my finger and then I'm going to stamp it with that Bellini color um, just so it's nice and continuous in terms of the color scheme and I'll just gently press that down using my sleeve to apply some pressure to that and it's stamped beautifully. So that's going to finish the stamping portion, but I felt like even though I intended for it to be very clean and simple and it still is, it was too much white space for even me and you guys probably know I, I don't mind white space but I decided to get out this gorgeous cloud edger stencil this is from a colorful life designs this was actually my very first stencil that I purchased from a colorful life designs and what brought me to that company um, you get the outer and inner portion and you can really just kind of turn it this way or that you can see I haven't even masked off the hedgy. I'm just kind of working around it just to give it a little bit of extra color and interest in the background, um, but still a very clean and simple design and it's single layer. I'm working directly on a card base of 110 pound Nina Classic Crest. Now do stick around. I will show you the other cards in just a moment here, but I decided to take it just a step further and grab out my corner chomper, which is, as you can see, very full, I'm kind of shaking it off screen, trying to dump out some of the little um, paper bits. I really need to kind of shake that out and clean it out, but I did uh, round the one corner and give it some interest. Now, thanks for sticking around. These are the other four cards. I'll show you a couple pictures and then I will show you the actual cards themselves. So I did the elephant, the snail, the panda bear, and the frog, and they're all super cute. And like I said, once I figured out to start with that main arch, um, that made a big difference. So I hope this helps you if you have this stamp set and if you're intimidated by it, like I was, um, I don't know, I'm a visual person, person and it kind of helps to just see the stamps and kind of figure out, you know, where you want light, where you want dark, um, just to kind of help visualize it. Now that little bear, I did end up kind of coloring in those white spots for his eyes with a white gel pen. So that's a nice way to kind of give it um, more of a panda bear look, which is how I think it's intended. Um, but I used just kind of some embossing folders. That's another stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. It's mid-century geometric. Here I was able to use up some pattern paper scraps um, and some awesome gems that I had gotten from the store closing sale at Doodles Paper Playground. But so many cute little puns. Look at this frog. I actually turned it into a tag and attached the tag and I used some um, Alta New 3D embossing folders. I don't know if you can see those little frog uh, clay bits that I put for embellishment on the front of the card, but super fun to play with these. I'm glad I finally got them out um, and stamped with them, and it's always fun when you have gorgeous colors like those Catherine Poolers. So thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.